Hi, my name is Ryan Roberts, and the title of my speech today is How a PWR Nuclear Reactor Makes Electricity, colon, The Simpsons Lied. Anybody who's seen The Simpsons is probably familiar with something they show a lot, and that is things glowing green. It's absolutely not true. Completely ridiculous. It's actually blue. Uh, I have a picture of it right here. That is fuel assemblies inside of a reactor. What you're seeing there is called shrink-off radiation. And it's what happens when the radiation moves through water, in this case, faster than light can travel through water. And it causes it to glow. Very dangerous. Let me check my notes. Um, I used to work at Comanche Peak for about five years. I did a lot of jobs out there. Um, everything from janitorial all the way up to my last time there, I helped take the reactor apart for refueling. So I spent a lot of time there. I've got the opportunity to talk to operators and radiation protection, uh, learn a lot just about how everything works. Um, Uh, three points I'm going to hit. Number one, all thermal power plants are pretty similar. The main thing that changes from type to type is the fuel source that heats the water, right? So a thermal power plant uh, uses a source to heat water, turn that water into steam, use that steam to turn a turbine, which generates electricity. The only thing that really changes from plant to plant is, is your fuel source to heat that water. So in a coal plant, they burn coal, heat the water, great. Uh, uh, natural gas, you use natural gas, heat the water, make steam. In a nuclear reactor, they use uranium-234. Small little pellets in these very big uh, fuel assemblies. These fuel assemblies sit down in a reactor vessel. Uh, we're going to talk about PWRs, which is pressurized water reactors. We're not going to get into boilers. Those are a little simpler. They spread contamination a lot easier. Not a big fan of those. We're going to focus on PWRs. In a PWR, you have a closed system. You have primary water inside of your reactor vessel that flows around the fuel assemblies. And it's pressurized so it can get insanely hot and not turn into steam. That water is then pumped through steam generators. This, the water flows through these steam generators and your secondary water flushes over the pipes that contain your primary water. That secondary water then flashes to steam. So it's never coming in contact with any contamination or radiate, uh, radiated material or anything like that. That steam is then it then travels uh, to your turbine generator. From there, the steam blows by the turbine, spins it, that spinning produces the electricity. Then it passes through a condenser, turns back into water, and is, in the case of the plant that I worked at, fed back into the reservoir. And then it's just a constant cycle. Um, these power plants can run for 18 months, uh, non-stop, without a refueling, never having to stop. Uh, every 18 months, there's a refueling outage. They hire in hundreds of people to come in, do any maintenance work that needs to be done. Teams come in, they pull the, the head off of the reactor. I got to help with that. Um, they pull the old fuel out, send it to the fuel, uh, spent fuel pools, uh, new fuel is added. Um, carbon emissions, carbon emissions of a nuclear power plant, because they don't use fossil fuels and it's a closed system, the, the carbon emissions of a nuclear power plant are better or equal to renewable energy sources, people are aware of solar, wind, that kind of thing. There's, there's no carbon emissions related to it. 
um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the gist of how it works. Um, so in closing, if you take anything away from this, please know that um, radiation doesn't make things glow green. The Simpsons are liars. Thank you.